Are you bringing it back with you for analysis by researchers? Okay, I haven't told this about uh, this uh, uh, underwear to my crew members, but uh, <laughs> I wore about a, for about a month, and uh, my uh, station crew members never complained uh, for about a month, and uh, so I think the experiment went fine. It's uh, JAXA uh, and the uh, partners uh, worked on that project, and so uh, I'm returning that, and uh, we'll see the results uh, after landing. Thank you. Um, question for you, Dave. Uh, if I may, maybe a couple questions. I bet you uh, wonder if you'd be wishing you had had this fancy underwear on Mir with you. And speaking of Mir, um, I was wondering if you could sort of describe the two space stations. Um, I know that they're night and day, but so many astronauts have come back and said there are similarities. Um, the smell, maybe the sounds. Uh, could you comment? Uh, sure I can. Uh, the Russian segment of the current International Space Station is very much like Mir used to be, the, old, the prior Mir space station. In fact, even the odors and materials that are used, the colors, uh, the character of it, even the way items are stowed in it. Uh, when I went in there, I literally felt like I was going home. Uh, Marsha, you can go home even in space. <laughs> Thank you. And, and what do you think is going to stand out most for you about what's likely going to be your space mission, Dave? What, um, what are you taking back from this that's going to stay with you forever? Well, there's a lot of things. I, we watched uh, some rookies evolve into very talented professional astronauts. And uh, I guess when you get a little further down in your career here, that becomes as important as the spectacular views and the flying itself, and even spacewalks. Uh, for Doug, Chris, or Tom, or all three, I'd be interested in knowing what you're going to remember most about your first space mission. What, uh, what will you carry with you the longest that, that you've experienced? For me, it, it's going to be the whole uh, uh, community, sort of uh, the social part of being on the space station with 13 people. I just thought that was a fantastic experience. The, the operational and technical things were wonderful as well, but the part that you can't train that I didn't expect was uh, just the wonderful time that we had on the space station with our colleagues. For me, I, there's going to be several images that stick in my, wa my mind, in particular during a spacewalk, being out on the end of P-6, that is the very end of the truss segment, way out on the end of the space station when the sun is, when we're on the uh, insulation side of the Earth, so with the beautiful view, you just feel like you're really hanging out on the end, and that was a very thrilling uh, moment. I'll never forget that for sure. I guess for me, uh, that. The few times that we had where we just didn't have anything on the schedule and we're just sitting around kind of laughing and telling stories and jokes, uh, they just seem a little funnier up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and maybe f for anyone to comment, uh, you did have 13 people in a spacecraft for the first time. How did that go um, in retrospect? Uh, were you, did, did it feel crowded? Um, Maybe ideally, would a few fewer a few fewer people been a little better? Um, tell me about that. Actually, that was the beauty of the International Space Station. Uh, nearing its completion right now with eight habitable modules, it is immense uh, for a space vehicle. So often, when you would float from the space shuttle to the tunnel. Into the space station, you'd see a crew member in almost every module as you continued on from the uh, U.S. segment to the Russian segment. And that's exactly what it is designed for. There was room for everybody. We could spread out, but we could also congregate and, uh, and, uh, and share that experience. Uh, it is truly the first working orbital laboratory, but also the first place where humans can gather outside of the boundaries of the earth. Was it, Julie, uh, last question for you. Was it, was it hard for you to leave? Was it uh, a little bit of sadness saying goodbye to um, your fellow Canadian and the others on board? Um, or was that e an easier transition for you than you thought? Actually, 
actually you, you feel two um, uh, two types of uh, of sentiments here. You you do uh, enjoy it. Uh, the experience is so fantastic, fantastic, so intense. Uh, you'd like also to experience a longer duration mission. I think that is where we're going in the next few years, and it's important to find that out if we one day want to go on a really long voyage like to the planet Mars. Uh, so you do want to stay, but at the same time, you, you went up there to accomplish your work, and once it's done, then it's time to come back. Uh, hopefully, and I think we all said that when we saw it, slowly and majestically drifting away from the space shuttle and never... Yes, we'd like to come back to the International Space Station. Well, gang, you're going to come back home supposedly tomorrow. And, uh, give us a little thoughts on what I mean. The trip home always seems the longest, doesn't it? Well, um, we have a lot of work uh, left to do today. We uh, had a very small uh, satellite uh, deployment experiment uh, run out of University of Texas and Texas A&M. We've got uh, another one this afternoon. At the same time we're doing all of this, uh, we're getting our last minute preparations on the vehicle, making sure that it's all working fine before we come in for an entry. And, uh, you know, what you do is you, you take a, a spaceship and you turn it into an orbiting home for a couple of weeks, and then at the last minute you tear it all down and make it ready to come in and land. So that uh, actually takes a, a lot of work to do. And we'll get that and uh, talk about tomorrow. And then, uh, weather permitting, uh, we are all looking forward to uh, entry and landing at Kennedy Space Center. Yeah, but this was a home at one time that had 13 people when you were uh, docked at the uh, International Space Station. What's it was a little, uh, little crowded uh, line at the bathroom waiting to get in the morning. Uh, what was, what were sleeping arrangements like? It's actually a lot more crowded now than it was while we were docked. Uh, we've got uh, uh, a huge amount of space on the International Space Station uh, with all the different modules. Uh, it was kind of fun. Folks uh, spread out all over the space station. Some slept in the Russian uh, segment. Some slept in the Japanese uh, module. Some slept in Columbus. Some slept in the U.S. lab. And then uh, a few of us stayed on shuttle. So it was actually really nice. We. Uh, didn't feel crowded in the least, and I think if you ask everyone, they'd have the same answer. And, uh, you were able to accomplish quite a bit. It was, what, uh, five spacewalks uh, between crew members and such. Give us a little idea of what you were able to do up there during this trip. real smorgasbord of activities. It, it, overall, it was a complex choreography of robotics and spacewalks and resupply of the space station internally. We, we uh, did a repair on a, a deployment of a platform. We installed the ja final components of the Japanese module for Koichi's uh, Japanese Space Agency. We installed batteries on the P-6 arrays that had been there oh, 10 years or so and needed changed out. We put several very large spare pieces of equipment that will allow the International Space Station to go quite a few years into the future. And, uh, oh, what else, guys? Uh, that's the main idea. It was a very busy, complex choreography, very satisfying to conduct uh, with the whole team. Oh, and we also we bring, we're bringing Koichi here home, and we dropped off Tim Copra as a new space station crew member. That's pretty important. Who uh, who is uh, who the first time in space for them on this mission? Is, is anybody a rookie here? <laughs> I was just wondering when oh, you yes, yes, we have three rookies here, Doug, Chris, and Tom. I was wondering what their thoughts would be on uh, the first thing when they get back, what are they going to tell somebody when they say, you know, I was in space, and they're going to go, well, cool, what did you, what do you remember? Let's see, uh, first thing I'm going to tell them, is what a, what, a, what a cool place the International Space Station is. I mean, it's really neat to be inside it. And I had the unique opportunity to go to climb around on the outside as Dave kind of sent me on the wild goose chase, ch chasing after different uh, pieces of equipment.